In this video, we'll be talking about when zero is your exponent, and we'll talk about combining all of these different exponent rules. So first, um, it's really common. People see this zero in the problem, and they kind of think of multiplying by zero, and they want to say that the answer is zero. Now, this is actually not true. X to the zero actually equals one. And I want to take a second to sort of explain why. So if you look at this example here, x to the 8 over x to the 8. Well, we know this is the same thing divided by itself. So this whole thing has to equal 1, right? Well, think about our subtraction rule when we divide. Um, we would have to subtract the top exponent, 8, minus the bottom exponent, 8. 8 minus 8 equals zero. So this whole thing ends up equaling x to the zero. So you can kind of see how um, anytime you have the same exact thing on top and bottom, it's dividing by itself, which really equals one and not a zero. It's just that the exponent zero creates that answer of one. All right, so now that we've established anything to the power of zero equals one. Um, this applies even with to the most complicated problems. So you see down here we've got all these different variables, all these different exponents, but the whole problem is raised to the zero power. So no matter how crazy it gets inside those parentheses, because it's all raised to the zero power, this whole thing still just equals one. So that's kind of nice. Anytime you see a super complicated problem, if there are any zeros in there, that's actually good news because anything with that zero exponent becomes a one. So here's an example of that, um, that concept as well as the, uh, all the different exponent rules combined now. So we can see right away, there's our exponent zero. So we've got this whole group of parentheses, but because it's all in parentheses, all of this um, raised to the zero just means it's all a one. So really, we can kind of just get rid of all of that because it's just a one um, and focus more on the rest of the problem. So let's see, we've got 15 x squared y cubed and all of that is squared. And then that's all over 25 x to the seventh y to the fourth. All of that is to the fifth times a z. Whew, there's a lot going on here, but we got this. So first, I'm going to focus on distributing any exponents that are on the outside of parentheses. So here I have a group of parentheses with a 2 on the outside, and here I have a group of parentheses with a 5 exponent on the outside. So those are the things that I need to distribute first before I can start combining my x's and y's. So I'll start with the top. So let's see, we've got 15 squared times x squared squared, so here let me write this, x squared squared times y to the third squared. So I've distributed to the x squared and to the y cubed there. And then in the denominator, be very careful and only distribute that exponent to the stuff inside the parentheses. So that five isn't gonna reach all the way over to the 25, it's only gonna to go to the x to the seventh and to the y to the fourth, because those are the two things inside the parentheses. So we've got that 25 just chilling on the outside um, with x to the seventh all to the fifth power, y to the fourth all to the fifth power, and then that last little lonely z at the end here. So I'm kind of doing a bunch of things all at once here, but the main thing is I've distributed the exponent two, I've distributed the exponent five, now I'm in a good place to keep on simplifying. So let's see, we've got um, 15 squared is 225. Here I'm gonna multiply my exponents, so that's x to the fourth. Multiply these exponents, so that's y to the sixth. In the denominator, we have 25. Multiply again, that's x to the 35. Multiply again, that's y to the 20th. And we've got a z in the denominator there. That's just, nothing happens to it. All right, so now from here, I just wanna simplify and combine all my x's, combine my y's, and simplify those coefficients. Oops, there we go. Okay, so let's see what we can do here. We'll still pull all of this down around so you guys can still see it. Boom. Okay, so next, 
225 divided by 25. That's going to equal 9 over 1, um, but we don't necessarily need to write the 1. Um, x to the 4th over x to the 35. You can subtract your exponents and do 4 minus 35. That's going to give you a negative 31, which tells us that x's are going to end up in the denominator. So I'm just going to go straight to um, putting that in the denominator with x to the 31. Um, you can also think about four of the x's canceling from the top and four of those 35 x's canceling in the bottom, so that 35 becomes a 31. Um, and then the same thing again with our y's. We have six on top, 20 on the bottom. Those six are going to cancel out completely, leaving only 14 on the bottom. And then we also have this z left over in the denominator as well. So we'll just center that nine, and there's our answer.